Hey, in today's video, I got called out to do this repair on the garage. And this is one where the homeowner started it by hanging the sheetrock. And then he wanted me to come out and finish everything and get it textured and everything. So I'm going to show you how I did that next. Okay, welcome back to my channel everybody and what I'm going to do is just walk you through here what I did. Now I didn't record much at all on site because as you can see over there on the left there's a Stanley steamer truck running and it was really noisy. So the first thing I did was I started out with just a little bit of masking. I put a strip of tape around the edge and then I taped the um, drop cloth to that. And of course, before that, I blew it off, try and get it decently clean so the tape would stick. Then the next thing I needed to do was to screw it off better. Now the homeowner had done the initial install, he told me, and so some of the screws were hanging out and there wasn't enough. So anyway, I fixed that. Then the next thing I did was I went around and kind of trimmed away any loose stuff. Sometimes when people cut these out, they use saws, different things that'll kind of curl up the edge of the paper on the drywall, and that'll make it harder to finish, and that was this case, so I cut that away and kind of did a little bit of a V-notch there to allow for the pre-fill. And then I did the obligatory dance. Oh, you can see me back there. If you got a kilt on, you got to dance before you start working. So I got out my sand pole with some 80 grit sandpaper and I go around and I sand it mostly on the painted side and that's because there's these little bumps that almost always exist in textured walls and if you don't get rid of those it makes it harder to finish. Your knife will jump and chatter requiring you to put more mud on. Then the next step was I normally would go around and spray some spray adhesive like in this can here but my can of texture or my can of adhesive just didn't want to spray this day it was clogged up i guess so anyway the next thing is to put on some mesh tape now i just stick it on push it down good i'm using this mesh tape gun because it just speeds it up a little bit and it it just makes it easier overall now I'm not going to mesh tape the inside corner because mesh tape really doesn't work very good on that. So for that, I'm going to break out this product by Straight Flex called IS300 and it's IS for inside angle. And it's literally made for going in an inside angle. And the difference between this and paper tape is it's extra stiff. You can kind of see here what it looks like. And it's really good at correcting deep um, areas where, like in this case, the homeowner left a pretty wide gap there. And it honestly didn't have the right backing in it. So this is going to help strengthen that and secure that a whole lot better. So I'm using 5-minute um, or 20-minute hot mud here and just run a nice heavy coat up through there. Put it in, wipe it down, kind of like any paper tape. And I've covered that in more detail in other videos. So after we get the inside uh, taped with this hot mud, then I'm ready to go ahead and put a coat of mud on all the mesh tape. So I went ahead and just ran a, a little kind of a narrow coat of hot mud on here. I'm basically bedding the tape right now and pre-filling. So I use my six inch because I can force it in real good but you also can use like this 10 inch here and if you push hard enough you'll get some to go through the mesh tape and you'll basically get the pre-fill and the bedding coat and the first coat of mud all in one. This is why I use mesh tape a lot because it really speeds things up if you know how to work it right. So we go around and just put coat of mud on here. And I always try and guess how much I need, plus maybe a little bit. I don't like throwing away a lot of hot mud. 
but I also absolutely hate coming up short. So as you can see here, this time I had just the right amount to get everything bedded in, coated, and almost nothing left over. So hey, why do I wear a kilt? Well, it's cooler, at least if you have a fan blowing up your kilt. So hey, the next step I did was uh, to get out my straight edge, and I used a 24 inch skim coating blade here, and I just put it right on the hump to see how much of a hump it is. That tells me how much mud I'm gonna have to put on and gives me a guide on how much to mix up. So I mixed up a pretty full pan here because it had a pretty good hump. Nothing real major, but it is a repair they often do. So after I get a coat of mud on it, I feathered the edges and then I used this skim coating blade to go around and strike it off basically. And these things, you know, I used to not like these. I thought they were a gimmick or silly, but I am hooked on these now. When you're doing a repair like this, it comes out great. So you get it all coated, you run your skim coating blade over it on this first coat, and you let this set up. So now we're basically at coat number two, because the first coat was a bedding coat and a light coat of mud. So the next thing I did is I came back and I coated one side of the inside angle with some hot mud and you often it's easier for me and for a lot of you to just do one side you can get that one side nearly perfect but if you try and do two sides it's just kind of inevitable you'll fight it and gouge the other side and you got to come back and fix it so you can in a pinch but i prefer to do just one side because I've got a few more coats of mud to put on here anyway. So I'll come back and get the second side next. And you can see me putting some mud on that second side right now. All I'm doing is just kind of getting ahead. I put a coat right down the edge. I didn't go into the corner so I didn't damage my first coat on the other side. It just with this big gap he had and everything. I just wanted to get a little extra on this side so... This next coat will be even easier. Then of course I coated all the screws I'd put on and then we're ready to let it set up and prepare for the next coat. So now you can see here after the first coat I break out a light and see how it's looking. Now when you see these lap marks you don't have to sand them. All you have to do is scrape it like I'm showing here and it will just shave that down nice and flat really works well if you do it like i'm showing here you often have a chance of gouging it and i think i did here just didn't show you but it's safer to just do that scraping method so now i went ahead and put a coat of mud on the other side of that inside angle then we're done with that okay so now it's got a couple solid coats of mud on it and then i think i went ahead and put a kind of a skim coat of usg plus three the lightweight all-purpose on here what i'm doing right here though is i'm just sanding the screws and nails because sometimes they have a little bump that just shows up so i let that air dry a little bit and you saw that fan earlier blowing up my kilt well the real reason is to blow on this wall and it air dries the plus three quicker much quicker and i'm mainly looking to air dry the edges because the middle, I don't have to sand it really. Uh, all I'm really doing is trying to get it to dry those edges so that I can feather those edges out. Now I used a sponge this time and I did some dry sanding because I'm not real fond of how the sponge works. It depends how thick the edge is. On thicker edges, it doesn't work very good. That's when I break out the dry sponge sander. Now you're trying to sand it to feather those edges like you'll see in this picture here because if you don't feather the edges, your texture won't blend. It has more chance of failure. Depends how thick the edge is. I just go ahead and feather all the edges and then it blends every time if you can spray a matching texture, of course. So the next step is doing this touch up here. I'm just going around fixing any little pinholes, minor things that didn't come out perfect when I did the other coats and that's the touch-up stage you want to do that pretty much on every job you do even if you're really good 
you'll have some minor defects and check it with a bright light like this because you'll see things you didn't even know were there. So now we got all that done. We're ready to mix up some texture. I'm just using that same USG plus three all purpose. You can use about any box mud and just thin it down to like you see here, the way I was shaking it. Now how thin depends on what you're doing, but you can see as everybody likes to say, it looks like pancake batter. The more finer drops you want and the more you want it to lay down, the thinner you want the mud and the bigger you want the drops and the more you want them to stand off the surface, the thicker. I've got a separate video on that. It, it explains the six variables, which there's, uh, there's like six of them. There's nozzle size, mud thickness, distance from the wall, how far you pull the trigger, the air pressure, so on. Check out that other video. I'll try and put a link in the description down below about that. So I'm using my Harbor Freight texture sprayer here. Uh, I've shown a recent video of the Easy Pro texture sprayer, but on a bigger job like this, this is just way faster and cheaper overall. Material wise, probably cost me 50 cents, maybe a dollar. I think I can afford that, but there's other ways to do it. Now that Easy Pro will get this job done, it just takes longer and costs more. And you can see in the end, the texture, honestly, it matched perfectly. I stuck around till it dried and when it was dry I couldn't even tell where the two had blended into each other. So this comes from a lot of years of, of I've probably sprayed texture repairs 10,000 times literally and I try and teach that to you in the other texture spraying video how to shape the texture how to get it to have different looks but I'm going to do some more videos that will teach you even more. So here's how it came out in the final uh, picture you can see the shelf bracket right there that was new texture up above or old texture up above and new texture down below so i think it came out really good i hope this helped you guys out in some way but don't leave just yet i got one more thing for you and that is this end screen right here well hey as always i appreciate you guys stopping by my videos i hope i help educate you and teach you how to improve your skills with drywall mudding and so on and if you do be sure and hit that thumbs up subscribe bell icon all that good stuff hey i look forward to seeing you all on the next video take care